<laughs> Hello. <laughs> I don't know why we did it like that. <laughs> Welcome back to The Adventurous. The Adventurous. Where Yeehaw 1 and Yeehaw 2 go on Yeehaw Adventures. I'm Yeehaw 1. And I'm know. Yeehaw 2. I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> All right. Welcome back, everybody, to another thrilling and ridiculous episode of, of? The Adventurous. A the Adventurous episode with us. All right, we're back at it. We're going to continue on the epic tale. Just a quick reminder to everybody out there, give us a like, give us a follow. Give us questions. Send us some stuff. We're excited. We've been getting a big boost in listens lately and just wanted to thank everybody for kind words, etc. And now we will get into the show. We're going on a Mojingo quest. That's right. <laughs> All right, last week, Kia oh. started to make her way out of Bramble Beach and headed towards Wander Wharf. On the road again. On her way there, she had a small interaction in the camp where a creature of sorts, she didn't know at the time, seemed to steal her golden watch of speed. Um, After she looked around for a bit and found some tracks that looked like a bear with Spiky claws, right? Yeah. The, yep. Yep, mm-hmm. that's what you saw leaving from your camp. And then you made your way to a cliff face overlooking Wonder Wharf where you ran into Cupid Cranberry and Frogrick. And he was fascinated to tell you all about the Mojingle. But first, you noticed that the town of Wonder Wharf was under siege of sorts. A lot of bloodhounds were lining everybody up, and there seemed to be taking everybody's past world tech, and you saw, from a distance, Czar Bloodhoof interrogating your friends. Beryl and two other people that I don't know. Yes, that is true. Beryl, for sure. Two others that you couldn't quite make out from here, but you had a theory that one was half-elf-sized and one was gnome-sized. So, maybe that's Maud and Harwick. You'll never know. Maud was an elf. Huh? Maud was a full elf. Ugh. I never remember. <laughs> Elf related. Elf related. Yep. Anyway, and um, but there were so many bloodhounds and so much stuff going on, you weren't sure that you were going to be able to sneak in, but Cabot had an idea. The Mojingle. <laughs> the Mojingle is a creature he is looking for that appears to be a large blue yeti type thing and has the ability to turn people around it. Invisible. Invisible. And so he said it was a short journey up into the hills where you would find the cave, the den, perhaps of the Mojingle, you weren't sure. As you climbed up, caught onto the trail, you fell, stumbled onto a large, soft, gravelly rock area where bursting forth from underneath was a roll golem. A roll golem, the very same one that you had notes about from so many, so many episodes ago from a wild magic note that popped into your bag that described this as being a treasure trove area. The roll golem rolled around like a pill bug, eventually going back underneath, and you got a magical direction from your your new hat, the surged item hat. And when I put it on, it rubber banded. (laughs) It rubber banded your head down and gave you kind of a mental image of an underground scrape facility where the Roll Golem was, and also where the, the Mojingle lives. <laughs> and that is where we are now. You remove the hat. You. I. <gasps> it's here. It's here, and Cabot goes, the Mojingle is, is underground. Yes. Fascinating, Frogrick. Are you ready for your first proper delving, rummaging? It will be fascinating. What does Frogrick say? Frogrick looks up, he adjusts his little vest, his, uh, his, his frog-like uh, eyes blink in that weird direction that frogs blink, and... Wait, they have a weird direction that they blink? Don't they blink the other way? They blink sideways? I don't know. Honestly, I don't remember. We're gonna say Frogrick does. Okay. <laughs> and he blinks, and he says, I am ready, sir. 
and he puts large spectacles on his face for some reason. <laughs> uh, Kia looks at him and looks at Flibbit and whispers, I thought he had perfect eyesight. Yeah, I don't. I think he might. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any glass in yeah, those. I think it's I just a frame. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. he's trying to look like Cabot. Yeah. I mean, I guess he kind of like idolizes Cabot, so I don't know. And Cabot goes, all right, are we ready to delve in? <gasps> yes, I am. Well then, after you, rummager. Uh. <laughs> well, I'm the author, not the not the rummager. That's your duty. Oh, yeah, yeah, I suppose. So I will follow you. She puts the hat back on and just like sees where one of these entrance is. <laughs> uh, well, be. there's one right in front of you. No. Because you just saw the roll golem dive down in, but you would have to wiggle your way down through soft rocks <laughs> to do what he did. Mm. So you're not sure if that would be easy. There's another one that seems to be just around the uh, rocks of the mountain a little bit. You could, you feel like you could scramble your way over and it looks like a smaller entrance. Maybe it's a Mojingle entrance. I think I'd go over to the little rock rock mountain thing. Okay. The hat kind of guides you just a little bit mental images. You're able to work your way over and you find a small little crevice crack in the rock and that you could squeeze through, you think. I think uh, I look to Cabot and Frogrick, which are also like really small. Mm-hmm. Cabot's a gnome and Frogrick's a frog person. Yep. And so... Yeah, you are actually probably the tallest one here. Yeah. Yep. At, at being five feet tall, she is the tallest person here. Um, so she looks down into the crack and like turns back to the rest of the party and says, Ready? I'm super ready, Kia. After you, I will squeeze on in there and uh, light the way. Light the way? Yeah. You, you can glow? Yeah, a little bit. I think it'll be helpful. Oh, cool. You've never seen me in a cave before. I have not. This is my home territory. And Flibbit squeezes on into the crack first, excited to get back down into a cavern. Uh, Kia goes in after him. Okay. We go in, and uh, and Flibbit uh, starts glowing a soft, like, purple glow. Hmm. Kind of tentative. And he goes, well, I will stay next to you and follow your lead, but I will provide the vision. All right. And Kia marches on to... Is this okay. a smaller tunnel than so, what the roll golem was rolling Yeah, so in? you get a vibe as you start going down. That this, this tunnel is probably two feet wide and ten feet tall. It's like a little slot in the thing. And you're having to kind of turn sideways and wiggle your way through a couple narrow spots. Drippy rocks, you know, kind of that like moist stalagmite, stalag type yeah. thing. I was like, drippy rocks? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and so you're getting kind of wet as you go in, but you can you can sense the roll golem further in. And this tunnel goes maybe 100 feet in this direction, and then it opens up. Mm. As you get to that crack opening, you see that the, that the inside of this area appears to be uh, a hallway made of stone and cement and metal like some of the scrapes back home but instead of like an office building vibe this is more of a I don't know like a big cement tunnel vibe or hallway and you see the scratches on the ground of this thing that's been rolling back and forth perhaps a subway system you don't get the vibe that it's a subway system in fact as you break free of this area and everybody kind of files in and you start using the cap the roll golem is way down right now moving around on the far side of this facility you guys break out into this area and after just a short few steps you open up into a larger room and there's a bunch of tables everywhere and chairs everywhere and up above uh the thing on the wall Mm -hmm. it says mirage mountain ski resort and uh so it appears the mirage mountains maybe were there long before hmm. past world and cool. uh, there are snack booths like cafeteria stuff there's these weird flat boards on the, hanging on the wall on one side with some boots there and <laughs> yeah this appears to be a ski resort are there any frozen meatballs there's no frozen meatballs <laughs> <laughs> um kia looks around reads the sign and looks at the boards and wonders what in the world a ski is. 
A ski. A ski, Cabot says. Let me... Hold on, let me go through my notes. And he starts looking through his notes and he says, Ah, yes. It used to be a, an item. L this area must have been snowier, but people would strap them to their feet and, and slide down the mountains for fun on snow. Fascinating. And he runs over oh. to look at some of the snowboards and skis. Does it look like the roll golem can come into this room? Yeah, as you look in here, well, make a perception check. 17. 17, yeah, you see the, the tracks of this roll golem. It doesn't seem to, like, come into the main bulk of the room. It kind of goes in the hallways. Uh. And so most of the tracks, the hallway that you came from, this room kind of opens up to the right, and then the hallway ahead of you are going that way. It seems like it rolls through here quite a bit. Yeah, uh focuses on the hat to see where the uh okay the thing is yeah you focus on the hat and now that you're in here it's not rubber banding you as much in the direction of the ruin because you're in it yeah but you just kind of get an overall sense almost like what i would akin to like a radar of Beep. like the hallway and pings of things Beep. moving yeah mm -hmm. and you can tell that the roll golem has stopped uh on the far edges of the facility okay like stopped? Yeah, like stopped moving. You can't tell what it's doing, but it's stopped moving. Okay. And it's probably, I would say, maybe like 200, 300 feet away, but through various switchback tunnels, so okay. not not very close. Okay. Kia looks to to Cabot and Frogrick, who are probably ex examining the skis on the wall, and um, says, we should probably get going. The big roll golem has stopped. Okay. I will follow you. I will make more notes of these later. And he puts his journal away, and he starts sneaking behind you guys. Can you please go ahead and start making for me periodic stealth checks? We're going to start with number one. Me. Ooh. Ha ha. 24. 24. Nice. Cabot did good. Yay. Cabot's like a master of stealth. He's very stealthy. Uh, 23 for Cabot. A little bit did all right. 15. Frogrick also got a 15. So you guys start stealthing into the hallways. You're keeping your movement slow. You kind of got the vibe when the roll go golem was up there that it couldn't see. It could sense you on its rocks, mm -hmm. right? I would say about halfway down this tunnel, you turn a corner, and there's like rows of vending machines, these old boxes with food inside. Uh, one of them is still glowing. The rest of them are all dead and done. Mm. And that's what you see up in front of you. And then at the end of the hallway, it makes a turn and you can see some almost like a storage facility down there. There's a bunch of boxes and boxes hit in through an open doorway that you can oh. see down this hallway. Where in relation to the roll golem are we? Uh, you, the first hallway, we're going to say that there's four switchbacks to where the roll golem is. Oh. In hallway number one of four. Okay. Yeah. Uh... Goes over and peeks into the storage room. Okay, you go into the storage room, you peek in, and it's just full of boxes. They're labeled things like food and wax and stuff like that. Stuff that used to be used here at the area. Can you go ahead and make another stealth check for me? 14. Everybody did okay. You guys step into the storage, or you step into the storage room, and suddenly you sense that same feeling. The roll golem on the move. Mm-hmm. And uh, you guys are all standing there, and all of a sudden you start feeling the faint rumbling, and it seems like it's starting to make switchbacks coming your way. Uh, is there, does it, are there tracks in the storage room? No, it's tiny, tiny person-sized door. This thing couldn't fit. Okay. Uh, Kia quickly, like, pulls the others inside and uh, keeps the door open. Okay. As, like, a, yeah. like to make sure you nothing guys, seems off, but yeah, like, you hides in the corner. pile in and start hiding behind some of the boxes. A moment later... Everyone starts hearing the rumble, 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 rumble of the roll golem as it rolls past the doorway and it zooms past you guys going down that first hallway and then it stops and it opens up and it starts crawling around and looking. It's raising its head and listening and then it rolls into the cafeteria room mm -hmm. and you actually feel, you sense it going towards that entrance. So oh. for the moment, you have a moment or you wait. It's up to you. Of like it's going toward the entrance, as in it's where going you guys up. Came from, yeah, yeah, it's going back up towards that rock area where okay. you guys kind of came from. Um, Kia like peeks out the doorway and 
maybe like goes to the corner of the hallway and looks around. Is there any other doors, rooms it that looks like it could down fit the in? next hallway? Um, there's nothing that it could fit in. It looks like the next two are switchback. You can't see any rooms or anything. You would need to move down and around to the you know third hallway to see if there's anything else. Okay. Kaiba goes. Shall we move while we have the time? Probably. All right. We will go, and we will go quickly but stealthily. Yes. And uh, you guys start bolting down this hallway. As you run down this hallway, you see um, pictures all along this wall uh, of various ruined and some still intact pictures of people, and it says employee of the month above it. (laughs) Uh, And you guys start running down towards this first Mm -hmm. hairpin corner. Go ahead and make one more stealth check. Uh, 18. 18. Okay. Um, the lowest was Frogrick with a 14. Um, you guys make the corner and you peek around and you see that at the edge of this next corner is another room. Um, it actually looks like a room that has a cave in um, part of it. So it's just like an opening and then rocks and cave in. Like a big enough opening or? Not for the roll golem. Okay. Just for you guys. Do you guys make a dash? Yeah. So you make a dash for it. And Frogrek partway through trips on a stone and causes a clatter. And all of a sudden, everybody pauses for a second. And then Kaba goes, run, run. Mm-hmm. And you guys run and dash into the room as the roll golem starts, <laughs> starts coming forward again. As you guys dash into this room, there's a bunch of boulders from a cave-in at some point. Mm-hmm. And the room looked like it was a little side area uh, with some stalls, maybe a couple little toilets in there. It looks <laughs> like a bathroom that had a cave-in. Yeah. And there's a couple places to hide. I hide in one of the stalls. Okay. Uh, that flip it comes with you. And uh, like uh, be- as behind the toilet as possible. Okay, you hide. Cabot and Frogrick duck behind a boulder, and suddenly the roll golem, the armored plates of it flexing as it rolls down the hallway. You can see it, and then you hide as it flips out and sticks its head into the bathroom. Its body can't fit, but its head does. It sticks its head in, and it's twisting its head from one side to the other. And again, it's a scraper, right? You see the stone kind of metal back that it has, like a shell. Underneath it had these weird, like, ski pole legs. (laughs) And its face seems to be made of, like, ski teeth. Like, you see, as it's looking towards you, it has a big mouth, and it has sharpened teeth that appear to be little uh, skis sticking down at an angle. (laughs) So it looks like it could have a sharp bite. And there... It looks around, looks around, but then doesn't see anything and starts rolling back. Mm -hmm. Back outside or? I'm going to roll a dice. If it's a, or how about you roll a dice? If it's above a 10, it goes back to where it came from. If it's below a 10, it's going to continue on the direction you need to go and you're going to have to figure it out. Okay. No, so close. A nine. A nine. So it rolls and it starts making its way down the final hallway. You can sense with that hat that there's a hallway and then another big opening in that room, and it settles in that area. As you're kind of sitting there sensing it, you don't feel any other movement. You don't sense any other movement, but you can tell that on the far side of this room, there appears to be a tunnel going down. Of the bathroom? Very, very narrow. No, no. After the next hallway, in that big room where the roll golem is, you sense where you felt the mojingle go. Okay. Um, I think... You're going to have to do something about it. It's in that next room. Uh, like, does it show any signs of moving? Not right now. It is stationary. Is there... Is that where it stopped before? Yep. Okay. I think Kia, like, uh, peeks up. Can she... Could she whisper to, like... Yeah, yeah. You can whisper. Yeah. Um, she whispers to everybody. What's up, Kia? Uh, uh, I think... I think we should stay here. Wait for it to move again. Okay. We'll stay here. Yeah. Maybe maybe Kiel, like, stands on top of the toilet, but, uh, like, lowers down so that her ears don't poke up above the top okay. of the stall so that, like, if it looked under, she, they couldn't see feet. <laughs> okay. Well, time goes by. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. It's not moving. Mm. Um, Kia opens the door of the stall, like, hopefully sneakily. Yeah, it, well, I will say the stalls were open. Yeah. Um, Kia uh, goes out of the stall and peeks behind the boulder where Cabot and uh, Cabot and Frogrick are hiding and say, What's up, Kia? Uh, I, don't, I, th- I don't think it's going to move. Whatever will we do then? 
I mean, we have to get past it, or d- is there another way, like, in the map in her head of the hat? Not that you can sense. It's the way you came from, and then further around in that next room, there's another way up, and then there's a small cave going down. Okay. I, I don't I don't know. I mean... Well, what do we know about this creature so far? It's not the one I was researching, but I've been making notes it, of this scraper. It, it rolls okay, a lot? Okay, it rolls a lot. It rolls fast. We'll have to be careful of that. Um, it has, uh, those, um, board teeth? The, the mm-hmm. skis? Yes, the ski teeth. Those look sharp and dangerous, yes. And, um, little, like, pole legs and a metal shell. Anything else? Uh... It seems to not be able to see, but it seems to be able to sense stuff. Sense vibrations, or do you think it's sound? I don't know. I think because it seemed to sense us when we were up at the um, up in the uh, up above. Um, That's true. But uh, however, we did make a lot of noise with the gravel. Yes. So true. maybe it's noise focused. Hmm. That would be difficult if it's either one, though. Because you can't really avoid vibrations, but it's hard to not make noise. True. Well, we've been moving throughout the hallways, and it hasn't seemed to notice. It only moved over here when Frogrick kicked that rock. Yeah. So perhaps it is noise. Okay. Sensitive to noise. That... Do you think you could sneak past it? Me? I am quite sneaky. Yes. Frogrick? Flip it? Um, Frogrick looks at you with his vest adjusted and he says, I have not been very sneaky so far, but I could try my best. Or you could, like, stay here if you wanted to. Mm, I'm very nervous to do that. Yes, that's understandable. Okay. I think we should try to sneak past it. And quietly. Okay. And Flip it goes, Well, I will be. As quiet as I possibly can be. I mean, you're easy. You float. And I will also dim my glow just in case. Okay. He dims the glow. And you guys start creeping forward down the hallway. Can you please make your first stealth check? Oh, yes. 22. 22. Everyone rolled really well. You guys start going along. Flibbit not doing his stealth song. He's being very appropriate. You guys round the bend and you open up into this room. In the room, there is a huge, huge like rock wall on one side. It's almost like the mountain grew or this thing got taken over by it in a wild magic surge in the original surge or something. Uh, One edge of the wall, just total rock face. Hmm. But in the middle of the room is a very, very large contraption with cables going into the rock and a couple benches that are hanging from the cables. It looks like a ski lift. Oh. But it's almost like it, it appeared got... inside the mountain or something. Yeah. Or, oh, because like this whole thing has been underground. That doesn't make sense for a ski resort. Yep. So perhaps something it got happened. buried. Yeah, exactly. And a very, very large curled up pill bug looking scraper sitting in the very center of the room, not curled into a ball, but curled, like, on its side. Yeah. So it's more oblong-shaped. Um, does it seem to be activated? It seems to just be resting or stationary until it hears something. Okay. And you also get the sense with that hat, you're kind of gazing around that beyond the scraper, on the back side of the wall where that cliff rock is, is another tunnel heading down. Okay. I think Kia doesn't whisper. She just like, um, I think she just points behind the scraper. Okay. Everybody nods quietly and starts creeping along quietly through this room. Uh, Go ahead and please make for me another stealth check. Kia retracts her claws. Ah, there you go. Walk on the pads of your foot. Yeah. Another 22. Okay. Everyone rolled really good again. Nobody was below a 17. Oh, wow. So you guys are doing good. You start sneaking through the room, and you can just see this giant scraper, 20 feet tall. Wow. Maybe 30 feet long. It's huge. Uh, And you start creeping along, creeping along. Halfway through the room, you start seeing this tunnel up in front of you. It's small, and it looks as though it has kind of a blue, shiny glow to it, and you're getting the sense that 
and ta- Cavett taps your finger and nods over there as if he's saying, "That's that must be the Mojingle. Ah. And you guys start making that way. As you cross over that direction, uh, you notice that there is, with this rubble, there's a lot of loose rock you guys are going to be stepping on. We're going to need one more stealth check. Okay. On. Oof. Bad. Mm, I got a, what is that? 13. You're going along. Uh-oh. You're feeling pretty good. And Flibbit's next to you. Soft purple glow. Cabot's next to you. Moving along quietly, his spectacles down. He's, he's keeping his, his steps light. And all of a sudden, from behind you, you hear a clang and a thud. And you hear a frog go, Rubber. And he goes, I'm sorry, I do that when I'm scared. And you turn and look, and he has kicked a metal like ski pole across the ground, and it clangs into a metal thing because he unfortunately got the uh, magical number of natural one. Oh no. And as you guys turn to look and see Frogrick and what has happened, you notice it's too late, and the roll golem has spun towards you guys reaches forward, grabs Frogrick, oh no! and pulls him back towards a hole in the ground, tossing him in. A hole? Yep, a little hole underneath where it was laying. And tosses Frogrick into the hole. The, just like a little hole? Yeah, like a like a pit type of thing. Frogrick! Yep. And Frogrick goes, ah! And Cabot goes, Frogrick, no! And starts running over there chaotically and the Roll Golem spins around, sees him there, scoops Cabot up, and tosses him into the hole as well. Oh, come on! Uh, Kia looks at the pit, looks at Flibbit, and then at the big Roll Golem, and then back at the pit and says, I want to rescue them, but I also don't want to also get tossed in the pit! Well, unfortunately for you, with that, I'm going to need you to roll initiative. Wah, wah. Mm, an 11. An 11. Um, you are actually going uh, second. Oh. Flibbit goes, oh, oh no, I'll go see if they're okay. Oh, uh, And okay. he flies up in the air and starts making his way over towards this hole in the ground. And as he leaves, uh, he's going to throw up his thing that he did last time uh, on you, though. And he is going to reach a tentacle back as he flies away. And you feel an aura of cloudy, stenchy flumpy protection go over you and he's casting his his version of shield of faith stenchy the, protection yep, the psionic shield which gives you a plus two to your ac for Ooh, as long as he has concentration and he goes over and he looks out he's like it's okay kia they're fine they're just down deep i don't know if they'll be able to get out uh, and you hear cabot's voice from down below yelling yes kia we are quite fine but uh, you might need to battle the royal golem uh, also, I found a tunnel down here as well. Uh, oh. I'm going to try to go through it. Okay. And Cabot yells up and he says, Don't forget that it had a soft underbelly. That it did. might be its weakness. It did? Well, it wasn't armored. Oh, yeah. And uh, and then that is Flippin's turn. It is your turn as this thing uncurls from tossing Cabot into the uh, den and it opens up like a pill bug and it's got its little ski pole legs and it's looking towards you making biting motions with its ski teeth. Kia sighs and pulls out her bow and having fought several giant scrapers, um, she is going to try to shoot Zunderbelly. Okay, you aim towards the mouth and towards the underbelly then you can go ahead and make an attack. 26. Is that a nat? No. Oh, dang. Nice. Uh, Easily, easily hits. You rear your bow back and launch towards this mouth of this scraper beast, and an arrow sinks in. Doing? (gasps) Oh, pretty good. Me. Um, That is a 11 damage. Okay. And then don't you get two attacks now? I do. That's with that. Ha ha. Second bow attack. Eight. But plus. Plus, um, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That is a 17 to hit. Still hits. Okay. 
uh, for another maximum damage of 12 damage. Nice. Good job. So you rear back two arrows, boom, boom, fire it in. You knock one of its ski teeth free as the thing lets out a little chittering roar. <laughs> a chittery roar. Yep. Wow. And Kia is also going to try and move towards the tunnel. Okay, it's kind of standing between you and the tunnel. Oh. Uh, it had knocked people in and then turned back your direction. Then. Oh, I'm, wait, sorry, the tunnel where the thing yeah. was from? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, you can move that direction. It's probably about 60 feet away from you. Yeah, she, she, yeah, just the 30 feet. Okay, you move the 30 feet, and now it is the roll golem. It's going to look towards you, curl up into a ball, and roll your direction as you dashed that way. And as it rolls forward, it is going to try to roll you over. Mm. Can you please make a dexterity saving throw of 15? Ooh, that is a 24. Is that a nat? Nope. Oh, okay. Can't dwell. Okay. 24 easily. It starts rolling towards you and you are easily able to like put a foot up, catch it on the shell and like launch yourself into a cool backflip out of mm. the way. Uh, and um, we'll say that you even kind of like move a little closer to the tunnel because Yay. of it. And the thing opens up as you're able to dodge, curls towards you, but it is still going to take his bite attack action. 16? Not with flibbits. Aha! It comes down with its ski teeth for a bite. You feel the teeth come down and chomp, and then they reflect off of this psionic mental flumpy shield <laughs> that he pu put on you. And the creature shakes its head in anger and backs up into its fighting position. Okay. Uh, Flibbit's turn. Flibbit. Flibbit's going to say, well, the Cabot and uh, Frogrick seem to be moving, and uh, they're trying to squirm their way into some sort of tunnel. And uh, he's going to just throw out a uh, stench spray towards the thing, as he does. That is his only attack so far. Yeah. Got an 18. Wow. And, uh, do, 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 he's, we're at a higher level now. Okay. Ten damage as he shoots Ow. forth a stink spray that starts burning into the roll golem's side bits. It's so powerful, it's acidic. That's true. Your turn. Yay. Um, Kia is going to, so she's now like 25 feet from the thing with the yeah, moving yeah. little closer. Mm -hmm. Okay. She's going to. Flip out her little can of thorns. Yeah, yeah. And is going to cast Hail of Thorns okay. on her. You spray up your arrows. Arrow. Uh, first arrow. First arrow, okay. Because it's only one. And he's going to try to hit the roll golem again on its underbelly. <gasps> Natural 20, which is a 29 to hit. And I believe I have something special now. Woesies. Okay. So, according to Fancy Feats. Okay. Um, that's not an actual website. It's just a cool thing. Um, it says, when you score a critical hit that deals piercing damage to a creature, you can roll one additional damage die when determining the extra piercing damage the target takes. Ooh, nice. Okay. So we do our thing where the first die is always full. Yeah. So what so is that's that? D8. So eight damage right away. Then you get to roll two more D8s. Because of this extra thing? Or yeah. how does that work? Yeah, I think so. You get to roll another D8, it said? Yeah, it says, when you score a critical hit that deals piercing damage to a creature, it is because it's an arrow, mm -hmm. you c can roll one additional damage die when determining the extra piercing damage the target takes. Okay. So then you would roll 2D8 on top of 8 damage already. 1, 4. So 5 plus 8 is 13, 13. plus 4 equals... 17, 17 damage, damage plus can you make a dexterity saving throw oh boy what is this for him oh from hail of thorns yeah no and well i guess i should look at the pluses hang on um it would be a 10 nope okay <laughs> so it failed it's not as hugely dexterous as the arrow hits explodes in, in force damage. In a shockwave of thorns, which I believe is also piercing damage. But nice. that's not a critical because yeah, it's yeah. not rolling. So, for a total of 10 piercing damage. So Whoa. that is 27 piercing damage on one arrow. Whoa, nice job. Big hits. Um, 
And uh, those arrows sink in, and it explodes into the uh, Hail of Thorns, knocking a few more of its teeth and maybe one of its armor platings off. Yay. Then second attack. Okay. A lot less good. 15? 15 still hits. Haha, yay. Normal damage. Nine damage. So I did a total of 36 damage that turn. Dang. Um, and then she, Kia is going to continuously back up to maybe, maybe not directly next to the blue shimmer, maybe like 10 feet away from it, because you said there's a blue shimmer there. Yeah. Or yeah. D- is it still there? No, it, not a shimmer, just like blue, like glimmering rock, like as if something going in there has rubbed off some of its blue oh. stuff onto it. Oh, okay. Then uh, Kia is going to back up all the way to the tunnel and maybe maybe the five feet inside. Okay. Because uh, she has 30 feet. You can get to the tunnel, and then as you get there, you notice that it's a narrow fit. Mm. Uh, so it would be difficult terrain. But uh, So you still have enough to be able to go in there, though? But would I still be able to fire my bow from in there? No. You don't. You look in there, and you realize that you don't think you'd be able to. Okay. Um, Kia is then going to stand right outside of the tunnel. Okay. Uh, it Ready is, to retreat. Okay, and then now the roll golem is going to roll up again and rush towards you. <laughs> Flips out right in front of you and makes a leaping bite attack towards you once more. It's sharp ski teeth chomp chomping down. Ooh, hoo, hoo, finally. That, my friend, is a 23 to hit. <gasps> yep, that hits. Okay, you go to hit as this it comes at you and you're like, ready to dodge, and it, like, shifts its head and goes in for a bite with these ski teeth. You get pinched on and bit down on, um, taking only nine damage, uh, but I do need you to make a strength saving throw. Ugh, I'm bad at that. That checks out. I'm a cat. Nine. Nine. The teeth bite into you, you take the damage, and just like you saw with Frogrick and with Cabot, it grabs you and pulls back on for you, but without rolling, it can only move a few feet because it already rolled mm-hmm. over to you. So, and its walking speed is only uh, 20 feet. Oh. So it backs up only five feet, but you can tell that you are currently restrained in its mouth. Okay. Flibbit comes, uh, looks at you, and he goes, Kia, I'll get you. And he eh. comes flying down, and he is going to shoot out a bless. Which would kill the concentration of Shield of Faith. Mm. Guidance is concentration? It is, it is, it is. Um, What does Bless do versus Guidance? Bless would give you the plus four for ability checks and attack rolls. Saving throws and attack rolls. Guidance is just ability checks. Mm. But Bless is better. But Shield of Faith gives you the plus two AC. But you need to pass strength saving throws. I think he's going to go for the Bless. Okay. So you lose the two AC bonus. But uh, you feel a different kind of thing go over you. This bless spell, you'll have a little bit better option for rolling. Um, but that was his spell, so he can't do anything else on his turn. He's going to fly down, and he's going to uh, kind of be adjacent of the tunnel entrance so that he's ready to go in also. Okay. It's your turn. As you are restrained, you cannot move, and you can't gain any bonus to your speed. Attack rolls against you have advantage, and attack rolls you make have disadvantage. Mm. And you have disadvantage on any dexterity saving throws. But not strength. Not strength. So you could take disadvantage attacks from inside. You have your bow still. Your your arms are out. Mm -hmm. Or you could use your action to try to free yourself. Could I make... Could I attack once? Since I have two attacks per action, could I attack once and then uh, do a strength saving throw or no? Um, It's strength. It's trying to break it free. Um, yeah, sure, I'd allow that. Okay. She's going to make a disadvantaged bow attack. Yep, taking the lower number. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a 16. 16 still hits. Yes. You're able to lean out just enough, even though your body is inside the mouth of this creature, rear back your bow from Maud and launch towards its underbelly. Which is 11 damage. 11 damage, nice. Uh, this thing's starting to look a little bit hurt. Only a little bit? A little bit. We've done 81 damage to it. indeed, <laughs> and it's starting to look a little bit hurt. Oh, dear. So, just keep that in mind. Okay. And it 
you go ahead and make your strength saving throw to try to remove yourself from this thing with an added d4 from the bless. Wee. Oh no. 12? 12 is not enough. It pulls. It is now its turn. It is going to keep you in its maw and just walk backwards the 20 feet towards the hole. Is it, or it has it reached the hole? No. Okay. It's close though. And we'll say it's about 10, 15 feet from the hole. It'll probably get there on its next turn. And it is going to attempt to just crunch down again on you. Ew. Uh, it gets advantage against you. Ooh, wow. I rolled a four and a one. You were lucky. Yay. It's too focused on movement and is not able to chomp down on you again. Even though Flip I'm it's in its mouth. Flying towards you. It goes, yeah, what, what should I do? I could try to help you. Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. He will use his action to wrap his tentacles around you and pull so that on your turn you can have advantage. Yay. So he's giving up his turn to aid you. Your turn. Flibbit's walking alongside you. You feel his tentacles wrap around your arms, uh, and he goes to pull underneath your shoulders, you know, okay. like a pull backwards uh, as you go. To, I have advantage? You have advantage, which... Yeah. Bless the d4? Yep. Okay. I'm still blessed. Yes, I needed that. Okay. 21 plus... So 23. 23. Easily, with Flibbit's help, you are able to find purchase in there. You brace yourself off of a ski, and you shove your way out and you are able to be free. So you lose an action, uh, lose an attack from mm -hmm. that, but you still have your movement, and uh, you are able to break free from the restraint. How far am I from the hole? Right now, you're probably about 30 feet again. Would I be able to go in the hole or just at the hole? I don't know. What's your movement? Um, you have movement things, too. Don't forget. Oh, I do. 30 feet. Okay, so you could get to the hole. Yeah. Feline... Feline agility. I can double my movement speed. There you go. You get down on all fours and you make a dash for the door. Kia is going to uh, do that and now has a movement speed of 60 feet. Okay. Um, which would mean that she she would be... Does it look like the thing's head can fit in the crack? Or no, no, it's the small crack. Okay. Kia is going to look at Flibbit uh. and say, I'm, I'm going to go in the crack. Okay, I'm going to keep holding on. Because he's still holding on to your arms. Oh, uh, okay. And, and Kia is going to get down on all fours and dash. Okay. Or, well, not dash, but use yeah. your feline agility to so you go in. Move your feline agility all the way there. You get there. You technically have one attack if you want it, or are you just going to jump in? Kia is going to do one attack. Okay, spin so around. As you're running, you spin around, pull out your bow, launch one attack at the roll golem. Come on. Another 19. That is a 28. That definitely hits. Yee. Which is max damage. Wow. A like 12. Okay. Uh, definitely starting to look a little bit more hurt as it goes, but still rolling fine. Uh, you turn and make a mad dash in as you dash into this narrow crack. You have to squeeze your way in. So it's right behind you. Difficult terrain, so I can only move in 15 feet. Ye well, you move. Yeah, yeah. You can only move in 15 feet. So you move in 15 feet, and the roll golem's turn comes up, and it just rolls, goes into a big roll, and it just rolls and rolls and rolls and just bashes into the wall that you are there. And it opens up and looks at you and snarls, but it cannot get in. Yeah. So effectively, combat is over, and you start making your way through this tunnel, but periodically you just hear a bang, bang, and then growling and anger from this roll golem. You start squeezing your way through, and again, it's slick rock, and you're getting blue kind of shiny liquid as you go through. Oh. And uh, you finally get to this opening, and it almost feels like you were going kind of down and back through, and you get to a small little opening. And as you get into this area, on the far side of the room, you see Cabot and Frogrick coming oh. through another crack, and you're in a large area, and in the middle of the room is a bright blue furry creature sitting there going <laughs> over the top of a pile of past world tech and it's just picking them up and looking at them and it does not notice you guys right away Cabot looks at you from across the room gives you a wave and goes points at it and mouths the word Mojingo <laughs> how in the world do I know like Mojingo uh, that's like not really recognizable as a word for lip reading perfect I think yeah like 
uh, cocks her head at him and says, Bowingle? Or, or, and like mouths Bowingle? Oh, okay, I was going to say, says or mouths? Yeah. And he just nods because he thinks he understood you. And he picks up his sack of past world tech items and nods and points towards it. Uh, Kia goes, oh, Kia in her head goes, oh, okay. And so she um, nods at him and like kind of also gestures okay. towards the, okay. the jingle. Okay, Cabot takes the big sack and he steps forward quietly. And you see the, the blue Mojingle's head perk up. And then all of a sudden, Cabot says, Pardon me, sir, but I've come bearing gifts. And then he dumps out the sack on the ground, and it's just full of weird past world tech items. And the Mojingle stands up very suddenly, turns around, shakes its fur as it sees you guys in its den, and becomes invisible. It goes, oh. And then you hear scrambling across the top of past world tech stuff. And you can kind of see the shimmer, and it goes and hides in a corner. And you can make a perception check. <laughs> <laughs> to try to figure out where it is. Yep. 16. 16? Uh, yeah, you can definitely tell where it went, and you can see the slight shimmer of its invisibility, and it's just in the corner. And Cabot looks at you and goes, Well, I wasn't really sure what I expected, but it seems to be uh, nervous. Yes. You hear another boom from up above. And the, uh, the Mojingle uh, moves again. And you can see the shimmer. You can kind of see like the outline of its body. <laughs> and it's just looking at you guys trying to hide. Um, I look directly at it and say, Um, I I need something from your horde and uh, maybe maybe a favor. Um, if you would accept some of these offerings. Um, make a persuasion check. <laughs> persuasion. You technically still have bless. Oh, I do. Oh, I do. Yep. 19. 19? The Mojingle shimmers forward a little bit. It goes, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> And then all of a sudden the invisibility drops and you hear a kind of favor. Yes. Favor. And it kind of walks forward and it kind of looks at you and looks at Cabot and then it sees the pile of pastoral tech, kind of sniffs its nose up in the air. And then runs over to the past world tech items and starts digging through, going, ha, 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 stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as it clam- yep, as it clambers over its past world thing, uh, you kind of notice that uh, the Mo Jingle here seems to have a lot of items from the ski ra- or ski lift oh. convention. There's a lot of items in there, and um, very clearly you see a couple of really, really nice-looking, powerful past world tech items in a pile on the ground, including one golden watch of speed. Yeah. And the Mojingle's just going through all this stuff, and it uh, looks back up at you as it's suddenly, like, wearing, like, various past world tech items on its body and uh, is munching on, like, a uh, a calculator. <laughs> um, uh. Stuff good. Uh, Kyo and turns and looks at you. Kyo winces <laughs> like hard, and uh, she just um, takes a step toward the mo- Mojingle. <laughs> oh. oh, and he gets so nervous. He steps. He looks at you and looks up and down, and he, he looks like he's gonna start shaking to maybe to turn invisible again. Uh, Kyo holds up her hands. Oh, oh, and says, "I need something, two things from you." Two stuff things. Yes. Okay. One is from that pile over there. My pile. Just one item. Okay. Is it okay if I go over there? And he goes, and he start. You start walking over there, and he starts walking with you, looking at you, and he also puts his hands up, <laughs> like you are doing, and you guys are both walking with hands up towards <laughs> his pile. Uh, he goes, one, one item. Yes. What, what? And he points at the thing and puts his hands back up. <laughs> I, I drop my hands. Okay, and he I, drops his hands. And I point at the golden watch of speed, and I say, just that. And he looks, he picks up the golden watch of speed, and he looks at it and looks at you, and he goes, ha, 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 stole. Yes. Stole. And, you, and he gives it back to you and laughs and claps his hands. I, I put it back on mm. and say, thank you. Now. Welcome. 
Yes. And Cabot goes, this is so fascinating. Keep going. You're doing great. Cabot's just making furious notes about the Mojingle. <laughs> um, I say, I need one more thing from you. Some of your invisibility. Turn Yes. Turn no see. And he shakes his body and becomes invisible for a second. And you just see the shimmer there. And you can kind of still see him. It's mm-hmm. like a invisibility cloak. And then he goes, ha, 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 no see. And then he runs around you a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say, yes. Um, Do you know how long this no see lasts? Uh, long as I shake. And he's shaking his body back and forth a little bit. Does it work the same way on other people? Huh, huh, yes. And he raises an arm above uh, Flibbit. He goes over to Flibbit and shakes his arm, and a bunch of weird blue dust falls off of him and goes over the top of Flibbit, and Flibbit goes, whoop, out of existence. Flibbit's like, oh, that was cool. Am I invisible? Yeah. That's fascinating. I like this Mojingle guy. <laughs> And the Mojinko comes back into existence, and he goes, Need for what? I need to sneak past evil people. Mm. To... No like evil. Yeah, I don't either. What Mojingo? What? And Cabot goes, You, you are the Mojingo. <laughs> and he looks for a little bit, furrows his big blue brows, and uh, scratches his beard a little bit, his beardy chin, and he goes, Mojingo? Yeah. Mojingle. And he nods in his statement. And he says, mm-hmm. me must come for no see. Okay. Are, are you fine with that? It's it's to the... Um... Mojingle, accept trade for favor. Okay. Thank you. He kind of looks at you for a second. And he looks you up and down. He's your, the bow in your hand. Mm-hmm. And he goes, hmm, sharp, sharp bendy thing. Me have sharp bendy thing. Um, why do you want the sharp... Uh, why do you want my bow? No, me have one. And he runs over to this uh, crate in the ground. And he brings it over going, <laughs> Mojingo. And he slaps it on the ground and kicks the lid off. He kicks the he lid does. off. And inside, you see a cluster of weaponry. Oh. A bunch of past world tech items. And uh, two things, two things pop out as excitement. Well, I should say three things total. Two, two items. One is a set. Mm-hmm. And you look inside, and you see a very, very nice-looking bow Oh! that catches your eye. And it seems to be made of scraper parts. Really? Yeah. It's got, like, crazy gears and pieces of metallic stuff. You see, like, some of the lenses that you've seen as eyes. And it comes around, and then the cord seems to be, like, metallic. Oh. And it's very shiny, stainless steel. And uh, then on underneath that, you see two handled weapons. One is a massive spoon, and one is a massive fork. <laughs> and they seem to be putting off a magical glow. What? And so he picked them up, and the bow, and he, he looks at you, and he goes, here, you have, have, you have. Oh, uh, the, thank you. And she takes it. Takes the bow, and if you want to add it to your inventory uh, from on D&D Beyond, uh, Scraper's Bane, it's called. What you like made? I did make it. Wow! And you can uh, add it to your inventory. Thank you. And That's then you can nice. read what it is. You actually add, made it! Wow! I did. That, that's cool. Uh-huh. I equip it. You equip it, and then if you click on it, it'll tell you what it does. Do you want to read it out on the podcast? Sure. Okay, this is really cool, listeners. <laughs> um, I had fun with some homebrew items. It says, you have a plus two bonus to attack and damage rolls made with this magic weapon. Additionally, if used to fire upon a scraper or construct, this bow has the option to activate an arc lightning bolt between two creatures within a 30-foot radius. It has four charges per day. When activated, roll an additional 2d8 lightning damage. Nearby enemies must, must succeed on a DC 15 dexterity saving throw or take the full damage half as much on a success. Mm-hmm. And that damage does happen to the initial target regardless. That's cool. And then also, can you please add to your inventory as he holds up the big fork and big spoon and hands them to you and he goes, here, here, spoon sword and fork, fork knife. <laughs> and can you please add... Spoon sword and fork knife to your inventory. What? 
<laughs> you also made those? I, I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> Do I read it out loud? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You have a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls made with this magic weapon. This is a two foot long metal fork made of bronze with a wood handle. When thrust forward, an energy beam matching the four tines on, on the fork is thrust forward like sharpened knives damaging your target. If used to skewer food, this fork automatically applies a pleasant seasoning of salt and pepper to each bite. However, its large size makes it impract impractical to use for e eating. <laughs> <laughs> so you hold up the fork. It's about two feet long. The tines are probably like six to seven inches <laughs> wide. And as you go to thrust it forward again, energy beams like come forward, and it has a magical weapon like aspect to its uh, thrusting attacks. Okay, and the spoon sword. Yep. It says you have a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls made with this magic weapon. It's a two foot long metallic spoon with a stainless steel finish and a wooden handle. When slashed through the air, a sharpened energy blade projects itself from the front edge of the massive spoon. Additionally, the spoon can be used to eat. However, its massive size makes this that impractical. So, you <laughs> are able to replace your short swords. Wow. With the yep. spoon sword and the fork knife. And uh, yes. you have a very cool new bow as well. <laughs> I'm like a full rummager now. <laughs> exactly. That's what I was thinking. I was like, all these blades and things are boring. We need some more silly items up in here. Wow. Okay. And so the Mojingo looks at you guys and he, he sniffs around and he looks at the big pile and he just starts adorning himself with like various past world tech items. And he goes, spoons are good. Spoons are good for soup I... and slicing. Yes. I I can see that. D thank you. Yes. Yes. We know go no see. Yes. And uh, he gathers everybody up, and Cabot comes over to you and he says, This is the most fascinating. I can talk to it. We can have conversations. I can learn so much about the Mojingle. And he says, Mr. Mojingle, how ever are we going to get past the Rogue Golem? And Mo the Mojingle looks down at all you guys who are kind of crowded around him, and he goes, We go no see. And then he raises up his arms and he starts doing a little dance going <laughs> and shaking. And you guys are all covered in a blue sparkly powder. And suddenly whoo, you are invisible. <laughs> and you guys, just for the cinematic purpose, make your way out of the tunnel. And you are able to, with this invisibility, extra stealth and the mo jingle moving quietly, lead your way back out of the mountain back out into the setting kind of like afternoon sun you still mm -hmm. got some time and you start making your way down the mojingle just keeping you invisible the whole time and you start making your way back down to wander wharf <laughs> spoon sword and that's where we're gonna end our session we're going wild now we got mojingles we got cutlery that acts as a weapon we got cool new lightning bolt arrow thingies <laughs> just, just wow <laughs> how tall is the mojingle just like random oh motion. the mojingle is probably like eight feet tall he's like a yeti he's pretty big and so he's easily able to kind of keep his arms raised and shaking weird body dandruff all over you that turns you invisible <laughs> i had a weird creation process for this episode <laughs> Why? Just, just why? Because <laughs> it keeps you on your toes. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining My us on another episode of Mojingle Quest, <laughs> 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 where we dish out utensils and have a grand old time. Yep. <laughs> uh, leave us a like and a follow, and uh, tune in next time for Kia's venturing into Wander Wharf to save her friends. And. Maybe Pokazar with a fork. That's right. Maybe. All right. We shall see you next time on Dadventurous. Bye.